Hello everyone, this is Sir Felix and I welcome you all to the first Chemistry Online video lecture for this new academic session. In this video, we will be learning a bit about the solid state by discussing about the classification of the solids. Now we have already learned that matter exists in the three main states, that is solids, liquids and gases. Solids differ from liquids and gases due to the fact that liquids and gases possess fluidity whereas solids possess rigidity. This is because the constituent particles in liquids and gases are free to move whereas in solids the position of the constituent particles are fixed and they can oscillate about their mean positions. Now based on the arrangement of the constituent particles in them, solids are broadly classified into crystalline and amorphous solids. Now in crystalline solids, the constituent particles are arranged in a definite geometric pattern in all three dimensions. They have a long range order, which means that knowing the arrangement at one site, the arrangement at another site can be predicted. Now, crystalline solids are anisotropic. This means that when we measure properties like electrical conductivity, refractive index, thermal expansion, etc., of any crystalline solid, they will have different values along different directions. Now, this is due to the fact that measurements in, def in different direction, in making measurements in different directions, different types of particles fall along the way. If we take a look at this example over here now if we measure from a to b as from a to b and from c to d we observe that there are different types of particles that fall along the way and hence we will have different values of uh, these different properties now when we talk about amorphous solids the word amorphous is actually derived from the greek word omorph which means shapeless. In amorphous solids, there is a random arrangement of the constituent particles. There is also a regular arrangement of particles in small region only. And this is what we call as the short range order. Now amorphous solids, the properties like electrical conductivity, refractive index, thermal expansion, etc are identical in all directions and this property is called isotropy. Based on the number of constituent particles and the binding forces between them, crystalline solids are further classified into the following four categories. Ionic solids, molecular solids, covalent or network solids and metallic solids. Ionic solids in these crystalline solids, the constituent particles are positive and negative ions. These ions are held together by strong Coulombic, that is electrostatic force of a, forces of attraction. Because of the strong electrostatic forces of attraction, they have high melting and boiling points. They are electrical insula insulators in the solid state because their ions are not free to move about. Molecular solids. In these solids, the constituent particles are molecules. Depending upon the nature of molecules, these are further subdivided into the following three types. Nonpolar molecular solids. These are those crystalline solids in which the constituent particles are either atoms like those of noble gases, helium, neon, argon, etc., or nonpolar molecules like hydrogen, chlorine, iodine, methane, etc. The operating forces between them are weak dispersion forces or London forces, where there is momentary dipole induced dipole forces. These solids are generally soft because of the weak intermolecular forces present in them. Polar molecular solids. Now these are those crystalline solids in which the constituent particles are the polar molecules like HCl, sulfur dioxide, etc. The forces holding these molecules together are dipole-dipole forces of attraction. 
they are soft they are non conductors of electricity their melting and boiling points are comparatively higher than non polar molecular solids they also exist as gases or liquids at room temperature now when we talk about the hydrogen bonded molecular solids in these solids the constituent particles are such molecules which contain hydrogen atoms linked to a highly electronegative atom small in size such as fluorine oxygen or nitrogen for example in water the intermolecular forces of attraction existing among these molecules are the strong hydrogen bonds they exist as volatile liquids or soft solids at room temperature and ordinary pressure they are non conductors of electricity and their melting and boiling points are generally higher than the molecular solids of the first two types now when we talk about covalent or network solids these are those crystalline solids in which the constituent particles are non metal atoms linked to the adjacent atoms by covalent bonds throughout the crystal as a result a network of covalent bonds is formed they form giant molecules and one of the most common examples of crystals of this type is that of diamond in which the carbon atoms are linked together by covalent bonds as covalent bonds are strong and directional in nature these solids are very hard and brittle metallic solids in case of metals the constituent particles are positively charged metal ions and free electrons these are produced from the metal atoms because the metal atoms have low ionization energy and can easily lose their valence electrons to leave behind positively charged ions which are also called kernels each metal atom contributes one or more electrons towards the sea of mobile electrons these mobile electrons are simultaneously attracted to the positive ions and hence hold the positive ions together